Universe Inside the Brain. Merhaba değerli düşünen, sorgulayan, araştıran... Hello, dear inquisitive brains that contemplate and research. 50 years ago today, on the 13th of September 1963, I had commenced my research on these topics. Who am I? What is existence? What is the essence of existence and of me? It was a time in my life when I was seeking answers to my endless question. Yet I did not believe in anything. I had to start somewhere, so I started on this date. During this time, I left no area unquestioned and unsearched and I applied all the necessary practices of this knowledge in my own life. I always wondered, what is the essence of existence? What exactly is this thing called I? On which plane of existence does life continue? Is there life after death? What is my place in the universe? What are the worlds? Where do the deceased go? Is there life in space? Do aliens visit us? I researched all of this, and now I would like to share my results in light of the latest scientific findings. I hope you will find it beneficial. Of course, we're going to conduct this investigation using our brain. The brain is the mother of all topics. Whatever the quest may be, the brain is our sole key to solving it. Therefore, we can't get to the bottom of anything without first understanding the brain. Those who try will only delude themselves in their own delusional world. It all begins with a thorough understanding of the brain. The brain is the be-all and end-all. What we know to be man is the brain. But not the physical brain as we know it. Generally, the majority of people conceive the brain as the walnut-looking thing inside the skull. Is the physical brain the essential thing? Is what we refer to as the brain the physical brain? Let me try to explain it like this. Let's say I have some magic glasses. When I press a button, I'm able to magnify everything a hundred thousand times, a million times, a billion times. So, let me put my magic glasses on and convey what I'm seeing. Here's the brain the physical brain as we know it. As you can see, this is what we define as the physical brain. We say this brain can think, see, feel, perceive, but of course, it does all of this via organs, such as the eyes, ears, etc. Now my magic glasses are going to magnify this image. After the magnification, suddenly the physical brain has become a neuron brain. Oh, yes. It is composed of neurons and electrical currents connected through signals. This is a neuron brain. Without my glasses, I was seeing this as a piece of flesh. But now, it's a grouping of neurons. Magic glasses, magnify a little more, please. The neurons have now turned into atoms. I'm now amongst atoms. 
And my body is composed of atoms. When I look with naked eyes, I was seeing myself as flesh and bones. Now it's a body of atoms. Magic glasses, please magnify a little more. Existence has now become a quantum brain. I have now lost my body. I'm now nothing more than thoughts and data. At the quantum level, I no longer have a body or any other structure. I now exist only as thoughts and information. Thank you, magic glasses. A truth has become apparent. What we call the material dimension is no other than what we call the quantum dimension. And what we call the quantum dimension is no other than the material dimension. There is no difference between the dimension of matter, the dimension of atoms, and the quantum dimension. It's all one and the same, a single existence. Whether you call it material, or cellular, or atomic, or quantum, it's all one and the same. It's all a single existence comprised of data, information, and knowledge. What we call the brain, which is also comprised of data, defines and labels existence by evaluating the data it receives according to its already existing database. Quantum information is evaluated with the quantum brain, but according to the information the brain receives. Thus, existence is one and whole, because existence is a single collectiveness. There are no parallel universes, nor non-parallel universes, nor other dimensions. All of it is one form, one existence. But the brain defines and labels everything according to the rays and waves it receives and creates a world based on these. So, based on this reality, views such as pantheism, atheism, and monotheism have become completely obsolete. Therefore, oh, apologies. Where did the deceased go? They didn't go anywhere. They are where they are. Okay, question. Well, you may be thinking, the thing we call the physical brain is going to deteriorate with death. The idea of the physical brain may, but the actual physical brain can't deteriorate because the essence of the physical brain is the quantum brain, the brain that currently exists and perceives existence and consists of a database is preserved in the quantum brain as is. Therefore, there is no such thing as death, there is no such thing as non-existence, every brain, every consciousness will continue to live indefinitely. And so, the deceased are also amongst us. Aliens, what you refer to as aliens, and all other forms that you are unable to perceive, all of it is part of this single existence. But because the brain can't evaluate the waves coming from them, we are unable to decode them. As for the data that is received by the brain, ah, oh, my eyes, my pupils, my pupils imprison me. While my pupils allow me to see all of this, it restricts me to only this much and leads me to incorrect judgments and deny in numerous forms of existence. 
the brain. The brain goes by the wavelengths it receives via the eyes, which is only between the range of 4 in 10,000 to 7, in 10 thousands of a centimeter. But with what am I seeing the universe? With my pupils. The telescopes I use to see the infinite universe always show me only four to seven in ten thousandths of a centimeter of what's actually out there. So what's happening to the infinite range of wavelengths and the data and information comprising them that are less than four in ten thousand of a centimeter and more than seven in ten thousand of a centimeter. What happened? I don't know. The eyes have been formed and created to perceive only this much. The innumerous wavelengths outside this range are also being transmitted to brains via eyes that can perceive them. Therefore, there are also brains that can perceive beings that possess the knowledge composed of those wavelengths. That is, existence comprises information. and data, and data brains, and quantum brains that evaluate this information and data. So, what is my idea of the universe? What is yours? The solar system we see in movies, and the galaxy called the Milky Way, to which this solar system belongs, and the 30-odd galaxies around it, and all of these galaxies, along with our galaxy, comprises some place in another greater group of galaxies. And apparently, the Andromeda galaxy is coming towards us and another new galaxy has been discovered. And apparently, we're being engulfed by it and billions of other galaxies and so on and so forth. So, we claim to see the universe. Hmm. Hilarious. The universe we see is the data universe, comprised of wavelengths between 4 to 7 in 10,000 of a centimeter, received and transmitted to our brain via our eyes. We have no idea of the reality of the universe. Let me give a simple example. Think of a wall made of steel. Imagine that I've opened a 3 centimeter wide slot in it and placed an elephant behind it, such that the elephant's tummy is right behind the slot. You look through the slot, and based on what you can see, you claim an elephant is a cube-like object. But if I open other slots and you look through them too, your perception of an elephant is going to become something totally different, as now you're going to see its trunk, its wispy tail, its column-like legs, and fan-like ears. This is similar to our perception of the universe. Just like perceiving the elephant's tummy through a tiny slot, we imagine the universe to be comprised of the galaxies we perceive based on wavelengths between four to seven thousand angstroms. If we could perceive it through wavelengths outside this range, this universe will change form completely, so much so we would no longer be talking about this universe. Yes, the galaxies will still be there, but will they be like what we perceive them today? What will happen to the infinite space between the galaxies, the white matter and dark matter, black holes and white holes? Where will they go? Or how will we perceive them? How? There are countless beings and life forms there too. There are centers of perception, or brains among them as well. As many as the data, information, and life forms 
there are in existence, there are life forms that can perceive them. In essence, existence is all about data perceiving data. The brain is also essentially a data pack. What we call the brain is a structure composed of data information. So, the brain that exists now is going to continue to exist just the same after the event called death. The only difference is that the perception of flesh and matter based on the eyes is going to end. This is going to be replaced by another concept. But the brain is going to preserve its existence. Consciousness is going to continue its existence just the same and nothing is going to be lost in the brain. Life is going to continue just the same. So we think we're living within the universe, on Earth, there exists a completely different reality. So, where is all of this taking place? Am I really seeing the universe outside? This is the biggest trap of the eye or the brain. The wavelengths, lights, things that comprise what you define to be an image, goes through your pupils and is decoded in your brain to form the illusion of an image. Hence, you and I are always living inside our brains. Our brain is our universe. Inside this universe, we are each living in our own world. Everything is transpiring in your own world. How? Simple. During your sleep, you have a dream. Do you see the dream on a screen? Do you see it through a window? You see it inside your brain. Just like you see a dream in your brain, everything you see is the result of the wavelengths between 4 to 7 in 10,000 that reach your brain through your eyes, and you visualize them in your brain. Realize this. Your entire life is taking place in your brain. In the past, they referred to this hologram world in one's brain, the realm of the grave. That is, even now you're in the realm of the grave. Only difference is your connection to the material world. Your conception of matter is going to end. But you're going to continue living in the realm of the grave your holographic world for some time, because when the eyes become obsolete and the perception of matter ends, the dimension of time is going to change. When the dimension of time changes, you are going to start perceiving the rays and ray forms. Earth forms are going to disappear, and then you're going to start perceiving the sun that scatters billions of billions of trillions of neutrinos as a material object. Anyway, the topic is quite deep. I don't wish to confuse you with more. But know well, the reality of existence, the universe, and the essence of yourself is far different to what you've imagined until now. You must reevaluate and reconstruct all of your thoughts and conceptions on the foundation of scientific realities once again. If you do this, you will realize your essence and what your reality is. You will see how your brain controls you, whilst you think you are controlling your brain. In fact, your brain makes all decisions six seconds before you become aware of them, and you instantly take ownership of these decisions. Only after you become aware of an action do you claim you're so-and-so and you're doing this or that, or that you're thinking of one thing or another. This has been scientifically proven. Then it is imperative that you renew yourself, burst your delusional balloon, and step 
into the world of reality. Renew yourself. Become renewed, lest you are removed. You are either going to be renewed or removed. Blessed may be your new world.